Last week, I was invited to check out the Samsung Odyssey Arc. It was unveiled at CES earlier this year. I only had one hour with this whole setup. It's weird, but I love it. I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja, and let's talk about it. This monitor is 55 inches and it's 4K with 165 Hertz with one millisecond response time. This is the first monitor at this size to have those specs. Now, Samsung says this monitor is designed to have an incredible gaming experience for PC and console. And I think that's about right. This monitor goes from landscape to horizontal. It's a manual process that requires a series of pushing, pulling, and twisting, but having the ability to do so quickly is pretty dope. Now you can mount this on the wall using the included VESA mount, and this still allows you to rotate the display. Now, since this monitor is so big for mini desk, I think a lot of people will be wall mounting this. This monitor also was not using uh, final software and things can always change before they come out. So this video is based on my experience in that specific room on that specific day. The Odyssey Arc can display four screens at once, horizontally or up to three screens in the cockpit vertical setup. I had to hop on a game as soon as I walked into the room and I started playing Farming Simulator. Shout out to John Deere. Now, let me tell you that 55 inch curved is the next level for gaming. Now, after I harvested my crops for the winter, we had a chance to play Flight Sim and Doom. Now, as we flew through the sky, the monitor was truly showing its capabilities with HDR and the differences between the dark lands and the snow capped mountains. It's mini LED, so blacks are black and the full array color is amazing. And also the difference between uh, bright levels and, and dark levels was, was apparent. I mean, this monitor does a great job with dynamic range. So with Doom, there was a lot of action. So seeing the 155 Hertz refresh rate and feeling that one millisecond response time was pretty sick. It was a super cool gaming experience playing a first person shooter. Now there are built in Dolby Atmos sound with four total speakers. I'm not a sound expert, but it sounded really good to me. It was thumpy, clear, and still sounded crisp, even at higher volumes. It sounded like an actual sound bar, not a computer monitor. Now to control the monitor, there is a remote, just like you see for a Samsung TV. And there's also a control panel that you will use to navigate on the monitor. And you know, this is kind of where it gets weird. You know, having two controllers makes the experience not as fluid and the control panel that gives you options to adjust the screen size, which window is on the screen and just all these little adjustments that you have to make when using this monitor is really hard to use without a tutorial. And it feels like it's gonna be a steep learning curve. It wasn't intuitive to me at all. It was just a series of, of presses and like swipes and just, it just seemed difficult for me. But of course, I only had it for such a small amount of time, but that's just my initial opinion of it. For competitive gaming, having a 55 inch monitor actually isn't the best thing. However, Samsung lets you downscale the display to a size that works best for you. You have a lot of options and sizes and you can control that with that wheel I just mentioned. And it does a little animation behind the window, what Samsung is calling active ambient. And it's a pretty neat feature. So it's just not black behind the gaming or, or around the game. It's just kind of this cool animation. Now, since this monitor has four HDMI 2.1 ports, it has the ability to show different sources on the screen. Now, I was hoping for the ability to put inputs on different parts of the monitor, but you can't. So, you know, I was hoping that I can have a, Xbox on one screen and, and PC on the other and then something else on another screen, but it doesn't really work like that. You can run apps on different screens, like you can have the YouTube app or you can have the Samsung web browser app on a different screen. Now, I did ask Samsung regarding this and to my understanding, it's a limitation of hardware, um, but the door is not fully closed on that. Now, I'm not going to assume it's a no because I've been wrong before, but more to come, I guess when it starts to come out, um, that was one thing that was sort of a challenge for me, but hopefully we can have kind of a more clear answer. Now, beyond the input assumption I had, I absolutely loved the monitor. It sounded great, it looked amazing, and being able to change orientations is pretty awesome. It does still feel incredibly raw at times with some of the software, but all in all, it's pretty cool technology, and it's something that I wouldn't mind checking out when it's fully ready to give you guys a full review, but so far, 
this thing's dope. Now, here comes the gut punch. The starting price is pretty up there. So the retail price of this is going to be $34.99.99. There is a way to save money. So if you reserve it with my link below, you get $100 off. Reserving it means you're showing that you're interested in it. No credit card payments or anything like that. Um, no obligation. Or if you pre-order, you get $200 off. So if you reserve, then pre-order, you get 300 bucks off. Anyways, guys, here it is, the ARC. What are your thoughts? I love to hear them down below. Kevin the Tech Ninja, have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you folks later. Peace.